Alrighty guys, here we are hoping the rain holds off. In our previous video, we tilled half of this path down to the lake. And so now we're gonna do another section of it with a box blade. We're gonna use the scarifiers, the ripper shanks, to drive through this next section. And you can kind of see the results, right? Side by side, tiller versus box blade with some shanks on there. What kind of result it leaves ready for you to scoop up and scoop out with a bucket. Or in our case, we're gonna to try to drag a lot of the topsoil out with the box blade on here. Again, the reason that I use a tiller is because I like this result. This gives you a lot closer uh, to a finished product, a fine result to be able to use and spread this topsoil in another application whenever you need to. You can see the side that we have right here. You know, when we're going through and ripping this up with the shanks, it's just gonna make it kind of clumpy and choppy and um, it's not gonna spread very easily when we wanna go and use it in another area or location. So I'm doing this to kind of paint a picture of different tools that you can use, different results, uh, maybe pros and cons of either method. Of course, if you can use just one tool to break up and clean out all your topsoil, well, that's pretty darn handy. I can see us needing to use a bucket as well. I don't think we're gonna be able to, to, uh, to stack a bunch of topsoil. You can see there's there's scattered piles all around this property when we did the main driveway. And so this section here actually goes all the way down a hill to a small lake that's down there in the woods. I think it's roughly, if I remember, a 70 to 80 foot drop overall. So um, good test for the tractor here as well to see how that does navigating the woods. A lot of big potholes there from trees that we ripped out. Let's go have some fun. Oh, and if we spin the camera around, we got the guys hard at work over there. We are moving everything from the property over to the new shop in Pawpaw. Have three trailers lined up there. I think we're doing 10 to 12 trailer loads today, getting near the finish line. We're still gonna leave a handful of attachments out here for the tractor so we can play around with it. I mean, I mean, get our work done out here and keep projects moving forward. But pretty soon we're gonna be over in Pawpaw ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and extend down these ripper shanks so that we can get Everything ripped up good and plenty there too, but pay attention throughout the video. We just got our hydraulic top link installed, so you'll be able to see this extend and retract back in depending on how aggressive we wanna get. Uh, right now, this would be the most aggressive angle that we have with the ripper shanks, and I'm gonna go and level it back out once we're retracting those shanks and just wanna start pulling topsoil out, but pay attention to that. It's all done from the operator's seat as long as you have the extra hydraulics on your tractor. They make these kinds of setups for subcompact tractors, compacts, and utilities as well. Thank you. 
All right, so this isn't actually my, my first time using a box blade in this kind of an application. In fact, about a year ago, I didn't have any tillers. I was still waiting on them to come in, and so we used a box blade to till up a garden uh, for a local customer, and so it's kind of the same application, right? You're, you're pitching it way forward, using these teeth to try to rip up the ground, and it works, sort of, but it's kind of a pain to do. Um, it doesn't do as consistent of a job or anywhere near it. You're gonna drag along debris with you and, and trash and everything else. Um, so it, it gets the job done. It is using one tool, so if you already have a box blade, it can beat buying another attachment. If you have a, a need for a tiller, I think that does a lot better job preparing uh, the soil to be ripped out, just loosening it up. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. I'm gonna raise up all these teeth right now and see if we loosened it up enough to start dragging out topsoil out of here. I know we did over on the tilling side, but I'm not so sure on the ripping side if we, if we tore it up enough or not. But we'll spend a little bit of time with it today. We don't have enough time to get it all done anyway, so we'll be able to know if we wanna come back and tackle it another day with the box blade or if we wanna just slap on a bucket and use that to remove all the topsoil. So let's see how it goes. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. kind of forgot how slow going it is to put in a drive. I mean, it was less than a year ago, we did almost 2,000 foot of drive right here, but um, it's kind of loosen the soil, clear it out, and repeat for smaller equipment like what we have. You know, when I use a skid steer, it does make life a little bit easier, but um, tractors can do this job. It's just gonna take you a while to get it done. Now, as far as the right tool to get it done, a box blade is nice because it's kind of a jack of all trades, right? Um, I'm having 
I think more success with the tiller, uh, getting it nice and loose. It doesn't show up probably the best over here, but the ground scrapes so much easier when it's previously tilled versus uh, just where we ripped it up with those shanks. You can still see there's, there's sections of sod that are throughout here that even though we've gone over this time and time again, there's still sod there and we've used it with teeth, without teeth. I've adjusted the angle on the top link repeatedly to try to get right down in there and through there, but sometimes it just wants to kind of scrape along the top, which is frustrating. You can see down towards the beginning of the path when we would first drop down the box blade is when it really wanted to dig in as much as it could. But then shortly after that, it would kind of rise to the top and want to ride along. And I seemed to play with every setting that I possibly could on here to change the angles and the aggressiveness, and I just couldn't get it to constantly bite down in. But if it did, it would just fill up immediately anyways. There's only so much room inside that box there for it to contain. So it's a little bit different when you're using a bucket in front of you, like on your front end loader. Yeah, you're still gonna have, it's, it's gonna fill up, right? It's gonna fill up pretty quickly. And you're gonna have spillage uh, that just constantly goes to the left and the right, but you can kind of make these longer, straighter paths and kind of push that dirt more quickly to the piles where you want it to go and then just turn around and do the same thing in the opposite direction plus even though we did this for a relatively short amount of time my neck and my back are both <laughs> aching from being turned around facing the opposite direction i would much rather be facing forward if possible so this isn't to put box blades down a lot of guys love box blades you could get the job done with a box blade doing this. I just think it would take uh, quite a bit of time. I think having the tiller to kind of prep that job does make it more efficient and just leave a better result for that topsoil. If you do want to reuse it, you are going to have to repeat the process, right? We're going to have to come through here with the tiller again after we get all the topsoil scraped off and repeat it to get it down. Just depends how much topsoil you have. You don't want to put down your roadbed on top of topsoil because it has a lot of organic matter in it. And so that organic matter is going to break down over time. Your rock is going to sink down. Your driveway is going to sink down. So you want to get down to the subsoil. Just get that topsoil stripped out of there, something without the organic matter in it lay your stone, your rock, your roadbed on that instead. All right, so this side is worked up with the tiller, this side worked up with the box blade. And so we've driven over it a little bit right here, but this side was consistently worked. The entire surface of the ground was consistently worked up over here. It was just where those shanks went down and ripped it up and a little bit offset on the path coming back too, but there's a lot of areas that really haven't been touched. And so while it does make it easier to still scrape off some of the, the topsoil and the debris that's there, you know, it's not gonna mix it all in uh, like you see over here. It's just a different tool for the job. Depends what you really want your end result to be. If you don't care about reusing that topsoil, which if you're doing a big project, you're gonna have yards and yards and yards and yards of topsoil that you're taking out. So you may be able to sell it if you don't wanna use it. So it's just something to consider on, on how you wanna proceed. Now we do sell all sorts of tractor attachments, whether you're looking for a box blade, a bucket, a land plane, a grapple, a snow pusher, a tiller, whatever you need, we can help. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. If you enjoy watching tractor videos, we put them out all the time. Hit that subscribe button right down below to follow along. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.